Beam down smoke. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be an Investment Odyssey episode. So welcome back to Investment Odyssey. Let's go ahead and check out what we had in the previous episode and then move on to our new pickups. I also got a new outro, so if you guys wanna go ahead and check that out at the end of the video, I would much appreciate that. The sponsor for today's video is vloot.io. They are a giveaway site. All you have to do is go to the site and use the different ways to enter the giveaways that they actually provide. And once you do that, you can go ahead and win quite a lot of really cool items, including Steam gift cards and a bunch of really cool skins in CSGO that of course you can use for investing. At the moment they actually have an Op Asimov and AK Asimov giveaway going on and of course the Op Asimov was actually featured in an episode of Investment Odyssey so yeah definitely an investment that I recommend and something you could actually win for free. Hopefully you guys give them a visit and enter some of the giveaways and if you want to go ahead and do that just use the link in the description below. And with that said let's check out our spreadsheet. So there's actually a project that one of my friends is working on where you can actually do an auto updating CSGO spreadsheet however there are still a few kinks that he's working out and so I don't want to do a full transfer over to that at the current moments. So what I'm going to do is just continue using the old spreadsheet on the Excel documents, but I definitely want to give them a shout out when it is actually working, and I'll be using that in future episodes. So as you can see here, we actually got some pretty exciting news for our spreadsheet. It looks like we're actually up $45.24 from the previous episode, which is huge. A lot of that comes from the stuff that we more recently bought, which there was a potential chance of hype there. However, also some of the stuff that we bought in the previous episode actually declined in price, so I would doubt that, and I would consider it just normal market movements. And I think we actually just did pretty good in terms of the market over the last two weeks. So we actually did make over $45 and it actually really highlights how important it is to diversify your investments. So for example, if you were to just buy into one of the things that I talked about and that ended up being the decimator, for example, you would have lost money over the past two weeks. However, if you would have bought into a multiple of things that I actually talked about, such as the decimator plus like some shadow web cases, you would have, for example, actually profited quite a bit over the past couple weeks. So while some people say specialization is important, I would say when it comes to the CSGO market, just because of how volatile things can be with updates for example, I would say it's probably more important to diversify. If you maybe want to look over the spreadsheet more carefully, I did go ahead and add in a new thing here, which is all of those up or down or non applicables, which are going to be basically how much the item rose since the previous episode. Also, quickly, we actually cleared over $400 in our total investment portfolio, so that's really awesome as well. Anyway, let's get on to our new pickups for this episode. So, I'm actually going to start with, I guess, a little bit of housekeeping, if you want to call it that. I just wanted to go ahead and buy a little bit more into some of the items that have been performing pretty well and stuff that I think is going to perform even better in the future. So for example, I actually picked up 10 more Shattered Web cases, which actually doubles our potential multiplier for them because we have 10 currently. So I think that's actually a really good pickup, so I went ahead and got 10 more of those. The other thing I did is I went ahead and spent just an extra $10 on Gold Web Foils, so I bought an extra two of them off the Steam Community Market. So we went ahead and also added to that multiplier. Even though we bought these Shattered Web cases a little bit higher than I would have liked to, I think it is still really important for us to buy an extra 10 of them just because it's really going to allow us to take advantage of any price increases that the case actually sees. And I would actually actually like to see a lot more Shadow Web cases in the investment portfolio in the future, so hopefully they don't rise too much. Now, if this was a more normal kind of investment and it wasn't a series geared more towards entertainment and knowledge, I would actually probably double down on the Desert Eagle Emerald Dormagunder because we saw pretty huge returns on that, and I would probably also buy another DreamHack 2014 NIP because I think that one also could potentially rise in the future as well, just maybe a little bit more, but in this case it's not more of a normal investment and this is going to be a more entertaining type of video, so I went ahead and actually changed and bought something a little bit more unique. I decided that I would actually want to go ahead and introduce Katowice 2014 stuff and maybe even 2015 stuff to the series because I think these sticker investments or especially applied stickers to weapons could actually be really solid investments especially going into this new sort of era on YouTube where a lot of bigger YouTubers are buying these Kato capsules which could potentially influence people to open more of them. Now before I actually show you what I bought I just want to make a quick disclaimer about Kato items. They are pretty complicated so if you're sort of a more noob investor or you don't really know too much about them I would really really recommend not picking them up actually because it takes a lot of background knowledge about them and a really solid understanding of how the market works around them to kind of make a good amount of money or actually buy into them at good prices in the first place. So I would recommend if you're kind of new to Kato items to not actually buy them just because of this video. I would say probably only buy into them if, if you learn a bit more about them. Regardless, I think Kato items are a really awesome investment and I also think that there's one pretty interesting factor about them and that's the fact that you can actually take advantage of one of the purest forms of investing which is specifically investing into them based on their quantity. 
So with Kato items, they actually depend on quantity and how many of the sticker actually exist for a lot of their prices. Some of them are really expensive just because of how they look, but in a lot of cases it's just because of how rare they actually are. So when it comes to Kato capsules, those are being opened like all the time. I believe in the last month there was around 34 of them opened, which is absolutely crazy. It just means that everything's getting a lot more rare by the day, and now is probably a good time to capitalize. So enough talk about Kato's and why I think they're a good investment for the series, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I actually bought. This is actually a USP Dark Water field test with a okay float around 0.2 and it also has a Dignitas Katowice 2014 hollow on it. Now the positioning of the sticker is kind of debated around a lot of people. Some people consider this the second best position, some people consider this the third best position. I would personally consider it the second best position because in the third position the stat track counter actually shows. Furthermore it's farther away from your view model and even when you're inspecting it it's farther away and I think this position is just a really good spot for stickers especially. Now regardless if this is in second or third position the pricing is actually not going to differ very much just because when it comes to pistols like this the positioning between third and second doesn't really matter all that much so when it comes to the pricing of this I could probably get around 2% sticker price for this just because it's a hollow and it's on a fairly more rare item and I actually ended up paying around 1.7 1.8% sticker price for this on buff and I think that I could actually get a little bit more. Now I'm sure there's going to be some Katowice people out there that are saying that I'm wrong about whatever aspect of this, but this is just what I'm saying personally. It's what I think I could personally get on this market, and if you don't believe me, that's fine. I can go ahead and try to prove it to you when I actually sell it. Anyway, let's go ahead and add this to the list and move on to the next item. Now because the USP was actually pretty expensive, and I also went ahead and bought a couple extra Shattered Web and Gold Web Foil items, that's actually going to take us very close to our budget for this video, and that's why I only bought one more item. It does actually push us really close to the $100 total budget for the video, and that's going to actually be the SG Blood in the Water. So for the SSG Blood in the Water, I actually went ahead and bought a factory new one. The reason for this was because the buff price of them was very much cheaper than the Steam Community Market of them. They were actually going for around 400 yuan on the Steam Community Market versus the 214 yuan on the buff market, so a very cheap pickup in terms of that. So the factors where I think this is going to be a solid investment are actually quite a few. The first one, obviously, is that it's a very old item. It comes from the Weapon Case 2, so a very old case in CSGO, and actually actually the red from it as well, so a pretty rare one in that sense. Another thing about it is that it's one of the top tier scouts in the game. A lot of people consider the Dragonfire another one, but that one obviously is a lot more new. And the other thing about the Blood in the Water is that it actually has a very unique design. You don't really see like realistic shark designs or anything of that nature on future stuff, or pretty much on any other weapon in the game. This item is in some cases used as a pretty common trade up filler, and if you watched my video on what not to invest in, you'd actually see that those trade up filler items are not going to be good choices. However, when it comes to this item, I actually think it does have sort of standalone factors for why I think it is still going to be a good investment regardless. For example, look at the op lightning strike, that's also one that's pretty commonly as a trade-up filler for really high tier op trade-ups like the Gunnier and Prince for example, but regardless that still ended up being a really solid investment, so that's kind of the same thing here. Anyway, we went ahead and picked one up and I think it's going to be a great addition to our portfolio. With that being said, that's going to go ahead and close out all the pickups for today. I did want to go ahead and talk about one more thing while the spreadsheet is up on screen. It actually is going to be about selling specifically. So as you can see some of the items in the portfolio have already hit their gold prices, but I'm not actually going to sell them yet. I'm actually only going to start selling the items in the portfolio once we've actually done our initial investment of 500 USD. So once we've actually put 500 USD into the portfolio total, that's when I'm going to actually start selling the stuff that's hit its gold price and actually using the profit for future investments. That's going to be the main method of us turning the 500 initial investment into a thousand by not actually buying more items, is just by investing into them, holding on to them, and selling when they hit their gold prices. Now, obviously not every item is going to hit its gold price. It's a gold price for a reason. Some is going to hit it, some is not going to hit it. So when it comes to that sort of thing, I'm actually just going to make sure I sell off the items that aren't performing as well and maybe try to put that in money into items that are going to perform better. Anyway, that's how selling is going to work when we get farther into the series and I've actually done our initial investments. So if you're wondering why I still have the items that I've talked about, it's for that reason. So here's our actual storage unit and here's the spreadsheet and I will see you all next time in the next episode. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. I know a lot of you are showing quite a lot of support to it, so I'm really, really grateful for that. If you guys do want to go ahead and subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest investment tips anywhere else on YouTube, just go ahead and click that subscribe button and consider turning on notifications to get updated when those new videos come out. Also make sure to go ahead and check out the social links in the description below to my Discord, Twitter, and also my Reddit. You can ask me questions there about the series and about other parts of my channel. Also be sure to check out the sponsor vloot.io and I will see you all next time. Peace.